I was thinking about squares. Small squares, like one by one squares. And two by two squares. Two times two is four, so four is two squared. And how about three by three squares, which equal nine? And four squared, which equals 16. And then we have five by five squares. Twenty five is five squared. Six squared is thirty six. And of course, seven squared is forty nine. And we know that 8 times 8 is 64, 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100. But then, what's the inverse of a square? So the inverse operation for squaring a number is the square root. So the square root of 49 is the square root of 7 squared, which is 7. The square root of 81 is the square root of 9 squared, or 9. And the square root of 64 is 8 squared, or 8. And these are great because they're all perfect squares. But what about something that is not a perfect square? Something like the square root of 50. Well, the square root of 50 is close to the square root of 49, which is 7, but less than the square root of 64, which is 8, so it's got to be between these two values. And 50 is 5 times 10. So what happens if we make squares out of 5 by 10? Well, we have a 5 by 5 of 25, and another 5 by 5 for 25 which means that we have two of these 5 squares. And we know that the square root of 5 squared is 5, so this should simplify to 5 squared to 2. What about the square root of 48? 48 is 4 times 12. So let's try 4 by 12 rectangle. Here's a 4x4, four four, and another 4x4, four four, and a third 4x4. Four four. So we have three of these four squared squares, and the 4 squared comes out as a 4, the 3 stays inside. How about the square root of 26? 26 is 2 times 13. 2 is prime, 13 is prime. We can't make squares out of prime numbers because they only have a dimension of 1 in themselves. The square root of 27. Well, 27 is 9 times 3, so if we build a 9 by 3 rectangle, and then we take a 3 by 3, a second 3 by 3, and a third 3 by 3, we have three of these three squares. So the square root of 27 is going to be 3 times the square root of 3.